morning, church. Uh, this is Pastor Victor here with you, uh, doing our devotion uh, from our heart to your home. I'm going to start off with a question. Uh, to be or not to be is the question. William Shakespeare started that question from Hamlet, if you guys remember. Actually, uh, it's kind of a very familiar phrase, uh, question, that's been embedded for uh, many, many years in, in the minds of people, even young generations. But I have a similar question for us. When we ask Jesus into our hearts, God gives us the Holy Spirit to dwell in and with us and to help us. Now, Paul explains in Romans chapter 8 that sin produces death, but the Spirit of God gives us life. And when we know Jesus, we are set free from death. So when we uh, have an understanding that we live in the Spirit, we can say um, that we don't live in sin. God loved us so much that He provided a plan uh, through His Son, Jesus, to save us. He sent Him in a human body like ours, but without sin. And He conquered sin and death for us as a sacrifice for those sins. He gave us a helper too, the Holy Spirit who helps us daily to be or not to be in Jesus. Let's pray. Father God, I ask, Lord, that you continue to guide us and direct us, Lord. May our every step, Lord, be that, Lord, uh, directed and guided by you, as well as the Holy Spirit, Lord. Continue to mold us and shape us into the mighty men and mighty women that you've called us to be. We pray for those who are hurting right now, Lord. Those who might have those questions, Lord, in times such as these, we pray that you give them the peace and you give them that life, Lord, that sustains, Lord, uh, through eternity, Lord. And we pray you continue to be in the center of all of our lives. And we thank you again for all that you have done and will continue to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Romans chapter 8, verses 3 to 6 reads, for what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh on account of sin. He condemned sin in the flesh that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. Verse 6, For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Paul emphasizes that uh, we have a sinful nature, believe it or not, and that God knew we could not obey the Old Testament law. Many people at that time thought that they could uh, get to heaven by obeying the law or by giving those offerings or sacrifices. But God knew that they couldn't keep that law and neither could we. So God sent his son, Jesus, to bring us back into that fold or into that relationship. By doing that, it delivers the sinner from his or her penalties, which is death. And of course, the focus not only on death, but on eternal damnation, where they're going to spend the remainder of their lives after death. The law as we know it to be was powerless over the fleshly individuals and could never obtain righteousness. So Paul's question is about the difference between living by God's Spirit and living in sin. When we live in sin, our mind is set on what our sinful nature desires. The unbeliever cares only for his or her sinful interests and has no regard for God. Plus, church, the reality is that we will consume ourselves in the justification of our sinful actions. You know, not able to see the truth because we're focused on others. Oh, they say it's this or because of that. Uh, it's it's uh, my environment, or you might have heard it's because of my parents, or my life has been because of whatever the issues that are going on with them currently or previously. And that prevents them from having a relationship with God 
and one cannot be fruitful. Their life is marked by obedience uh, uh, to the Holy Spirit. And that's the important part where they need to understand. And they don't uh, see the, that with spiritual lenses. You know, that obedience has to be of the Spirit and not of the flesh. God wants the Spirit to rule over our flesh. When we allow the flesh to reign over the Spirit, we find ourselves bound by sinful patterns and desperation that uh, marks Paul's life in Romans chapter 7. You know, that's a struggle that he faced. Our walk, the pattern of our life, must be according to the Spirit, not according to the flesh. Walking in the Spirit means that the course, the direction, the progress of one's life is directed by the Holy Spirit. It is continued and is a progressive motion going forward, you guys. Now, verse 5. For those who live according to the flesh, that their mind uh, set their mind on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit... Um, Focus on the things of the Spirit. Now, you see, church, we, we need to understand um, from the get-go what Paul is sharing. It, it's, it's, it's to be in Christ or not to be in Christ. We can't be in the world and then be in Christ. We have to be fully committed, wholeheartedly. For verse 6 says, uh, For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life in peace. So we get the understanding in verse 6. Uh, if we're committing our life with Christ, we're committing our life with peace. We're committing our life with the Spirit. And then that's where the hope comes from. That's where the peace resides. That's where the answers are found. That's where the correction is given. We get that in those verses. Paul explains to the believers that they have a responsibility. It is a positive one to live each day in the control and power of God's Spirit. Each Christian uh, should refuse to follow after sinful desires. And when we do follow after our own sinful desires, we can enjoy a spiritual life. That is why Paul is stressing the importance of being controlled by God's Spirit. Because the Spirit of God gives life and peace. God wants us to enjoy a full and spiritual life with Him, but that can happen if we follow after sin. That is why He says we have to be controlled by His Spirit every day, not just sometimes, but all the time. Life and peace. To be or not to be is entirely up to me. It's entirely up to you. It's entirely up to us. Christ has already set the stage and has performed uh, the greatest love story ever in mankind's history. To be in Christ or not to be in Christ. Let us focus on the desires to seek after the Lord wholeheartedly, welcoming the Spirit and allowing uh, Christ to be our life. And in return, He gives us peace. However, uh, many do miss out on living that Christian life. Uh, because of the constant uh, 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 stories that we hear and the, the things that we see in this darkened world. But again, we get to share that story, the greatest love story, to be or not to be. Let's pray. Father God, we do thank you, Lord, uh, for uh, these instructions, Lord, that you leave behind. Uh, that way we can live out our lives uh, in Christ likeness. And I pray, Father God, that we continue to be motivated, Lord, and, and digging uh, a closer relationship in your word, Lord. And as a result, you give us the life and you give us the peace. And in turn, we share it with other like-minded individuals, brothers and sisters in Christ. And then we get to share it with our unbelieving uh, family members or friends, Lord, or those complete strangers, Lord. I pray you continue to use us at this uh, church lord and the families that are all a part of it lord i pray you continue to be in the center of all of our lives lord and we do thank you again uh, for all that you have done and will continue to do 
And it's in Jesus' precious name. Amen. God bless you guys. See you guys this Sunday.